Sarah from 17 once again. This is my Dark Souls Soul Level 1 Restricted Run. And this is Anno Londo to Centipede Demon. Which might change because it's not the most interesting topic or title, should I say. So this is the hardest part of the game for this run, in my opinion. There are tough parts, and this is one of them coming up. This is the, the place that's given me the most trouble so far. And because I'm at the end of the game, it's I can say it's the hardest, because it was. You know, The archers and the imps combined are just hellish. Those imps, they became the hardest enemy to clear on this game, in this run. Because they track with their attacks. Their attacks have so much range that they're very difficult, and... I've never given them any real respect because they're, they're usually not worth it. But, wow. The trouble I had... Um, and I was happy that it was challenging because I believe anybody trying to do this, this is the area where you're either going to stop or you're going to really prove that you want to do this. Because the, the run back from this bonfire is grueling. And anybody that's done anything difficult on Dark Souls or just played Dark Souls, because da it is a hard game, will know that the run back to the boss is often worse than the boss. And it's just because it's not fun and it wastes your time. And it's one of the things that this game is famous for, you know. No mercy, enemies come back, bonfires, checkpoints, that kind of stuff. And I'm pretty deep in Dark Souls. I like Dark Souls. I like it a lot. It's one of my favourite games of all time. But at the same time, I can respect why people think it's an important part of it, but if it was up to me, I'd get rid of it. Because I don't like it. And I've never liked it. And I think it's the only part of the game I dislike. Because it's the only part of the game that isn't fun. For me, anyway. And we're moving into the Painted Guardian area. Painted Guardians, you know, ain't got shit on the Ghost Blade, so we're safe from these guys. But do be careful, they are tricky. And there's, they're one of the smartest enemies on this game. They're, they're kind of like the Thieths, but they don't jump on your back, I don't think. I think they just backstab you. And I can, re I can remember watching Dark Souls videos before I, I played the game. And I was watching a guy PvP up here on the rafters, and in my experience with Dark Souls... I haven't PvP'd much on the rafters, which is a shame, because I bet it's a, a hilarious place to do it. And I just remember on one of my, my first sessions where <laughs> a guy stood, waited for me, and when I got to him, he wrathed me off. Which, you know, Dark Souls all over right there. And I probably didn't take it very well, because I'm a, I'm a proud guy like that. And a lot of those earlier videos are, are very honest. They've got me sharing, you know, my sharing my discrepancies with you, sharing my pains, sharing my victories, and a lot of people now who are stumbling on these videos are just going, oh, all you do is complain. Uh, it's like, dude, this is a diary of my performance and I was shit. Give me a fucking break. What do they expect? Because the hilarious thing about Dark Souls is you can just get a big old montage, you can record for a few hours, you know, get a nice collection of your victories that make you look like a godly player when you aren't, and just upload those so everybody loves you and everybody licks your bell end and you can have that as your persona and I didn't want that with Dark Souls and it's the very thing that's bit me in the ass because I like sharing the the losses and there's a there's a large community of people that enjoy watching my mistakes and seeing how I learn from them and how I analyze them but then there's a whole bunch of other people that just take it as weakness you know the the ego driven troll douchebags who who seem to think that it's a lack of skill when in essentially it's a learning process and they're just delusional and, and selfish. But YouTube is filled with a lot of people and you've just got to realise that. And just like people, you know, people are like stars is the reference I often use because it comes from Outlaw Star, which is an anime I really like. And uh, she basically says that, you know, there are people, people are like stars, there are those who shine brightly and there are those that are dim. And there is a, a lot of dim people, unfortunately, and you have to suffer through them. But this is the really tough part, this part here. And what you're going to see is you're going to see me kill this guy with a jump attack, and then you're going to see a transition. And what happened is, uh, 
this is two different pieces of footage, but on this one I wasn't recording because I was testing out the firebombs, and I was testing them out while I wasn't recording, and when I killed the first guy really well, I thought, hang on a second here, these bombs are great, so what I'll do is I'll start recording. And I didn't have the footage of the first kill, so that's two pieces put together, and because I couldn't link them up where you couldn't notice it, I just did a crossfade to fit them in. Because this is the hardest part of doing the no damage run, in my opinion. Uh, this took me so much longer than any other part. The only thing that even compared to this in just sheer annoyance was Nito, because you have to clear the room of those first bunch of skeletons, then you have to homeward born out. Oh no, sorry, then you have to quit so that you're back up at the top, and then when you drop in, it's just you and Nito. And the amount of times I would clear that room, quit, drop back down, and immediately get insta-killed by the fucking Gravelord sword dance was untold. Just so unnecessary, and it's... It's not that it's hard to dodge, it's just that it's hard to get the timing down on the dodge when I've never really dodged it, ever. So for this playthrough I had to learn to do it and it was frustrating. And that's the only problem with frustration. It can make you not want to play. This is funny too, because you've got to land your parry. You can't, you can't afford to miss because you don't have a shield. So that has to be a perfect parry. Luckily enough, I've played Dark Souls before, my parry skills are are perfectly fine and we get past a, a difficult section but that is so liberating doing that once you've done that you you potentially have the ability to beat the rest of the game in this restriction run because the no damage is just you know test of patience test of trials the the no shield is a playstyle difference you might not share the no pyromancy and all that other stuff is, is all preference once again so it's it's manageable. It's very manageable. Gwyn, Gwyn is interesting. You can either get real good at parrying him, which is hard to do. Oh, and that piece of damage right there, folks, is intentional. I'm getting into red tier stone range, and I found the best way to do it was to tank a hit off the Silver Knight and then jump off the balcony. So one of the restrictions is no damage, which I'm fully aware of, but also one of the restrictions is you can break the rules trying to get into red tier stone range. And the difference is, I have never showed you how I got into red tier stone range prior to this video. And in this one, because it was a very specific strategy, I decided to show it. So, I could have only done one jump there if I'd have jumped from higher, but I made a mistake. Uh, also, another good way to get into damage range is to poison yourself, power within. If you've got power within, you can use it even though it's it's illegal as far as the restrictions go, but use it to lose your life. As soon as you hit tier stone, quit from the game. When you load back in, you'll still be in tier stone range and the, the power within will have stopped. But on this one, I decided to, to just tank a hit because the dust crown and the falls were taking too long. But this is Ornstein and Smo. I'm in red tier stone range using the ghost blade. But I don't think I'm going to keep it for much longer because the the mace I've got, the reinforced club. <laughs> that was so silly. That just goes to show I was experimenting on this boss when I was doing it. And if you look, the ghost blade, it does. It ain't shit. It's not the best damage, but still, it's fast and you can poise break Ornstein if you hit him enough. I think two to three hits is going to catch his poise limit. Which is glorious because it's quick. It's boom, boom, boom. It's, it's not like the clubs. The clubs take forever. But the clubs are so powerful. So unbelievably powerful on these bosses. Here he comes. Banana mode. And he does the hop away, which is very reminiscent of the, the geckos in Metal Gear Solid Rising. There's the stab attack. Just experimenting. Because I treat this fight as, as exactly that. Every time I play, just a little bit of experimentation. Because you never know when you're going to do it with Ornstein and Smo. If the AI is bad, good night. If the AI is doable... It's, it can sometimes be a joke. But it's funny, the noise that I think Smo makes it, like, uh, uh, that stupid monkey noise or whatever it is, it sounds a, a lot like the oral decoy from Demon Souls. Uh, the, the oral decoy is a laugh, but you know the pitch and the intonation? Very similar. But look at that, you see that? Wow. Ornstein is a bitch, man. Absolute bitch. We're just avoiding... I, look, I wish the debris stayed on the floor. That's one of the things I would love out of Dark Souls 2. Can you imagine if all the environments did this and it stayed? It would make fighting so visceral. Like, 
And I'm not asking for you to take environmental damage from it or anything, or block your path by making a wrong choice, but it's just, it's visually stimulating. It's, it's, oh, it's so good. Not enough games do it either. It seems to be something we've forgotten about in the current gen, but destructible scenery is cool, and I, I, I love the prospect of having more permanence with it. Oh, here he comes. Banana mode. Oh, no! <laughs> Gotta hate the clubs for that. That is definitely a shit your pants moment. And Dark Souls is a very good facilitator of dirtying underwear. Oh, I missed him. Ah! Don't kill me. There we go. And here comes Small. Dodge his hammer. And then it's Super Small. So, I think Super Small is is at the same time both easy and hard. If you get a Super Small that's going to do nothing but that stupid running attack which has the weirdest detection on it you've ever seen in a game. Like, every part of him is a weapon. Every part of that running is a weapon. And then he does a swing at the end that has ridiculous phantom range. You know, it's douchey and it's it's unacceptable. But we're taking him out. I'm using the pillar so that he if he does do the, the douchey move, I could just stay behind the pillar and he can't run through it. Because there's this fantastic thing called physics where force meets resistance and it says fuck you. And that's small. And I'm surprised I didn't taunt and the, the thing to, to bear in mind with me and taunting, if I taunt, it means I had trouble. Usually. Because I taunt almost as a victory dance, but I didn't have trouble on this run with Ornstein and Smo. New Game Plus, they're a nightmare. Absolute nightmare. But this one, not so bad. But they're dead. There's the bonfire. Time to get the Lord Vessel. And we're going to be going immediately down into Isolith, so the restrictions of no damage will not advocate the lava damage. Lava damage is, is not part of the rules. That's just something that happens. It's environmental. I think it is possible to do a complete zero damage run. But I like doing shortcut jumps and silly things. And there's just no way you can do that in that kind of run. You've got to watch everything you do. And I, I'm just not a fan of it. It just makes it less fun and this is about fun as much as I want to adhere to these challenges and as much as I want to be able to say at the end you know I took no damage that's awesome I'm not about blight town taking a couple of days rather than hours just because you've got to keep on going back to a bonfire every time you get fucking poisoned unless you've got a lot of mosses which means doing a bunch of grinding and farming the moss which I don't want to do because it's stupid it's really stupid and it's, it's, I don't know, I, I want the next Dark Souls to have a system where I would like loot to be harder to get, but consumables easier. Because I'm all for making loot rare. I would literally love it to be like the Exodia cards of Dark Souls. I would love it when you see it to be, Jesus Christ, this guy has a boom, you know. But there really isn't anything. And I want it to be something that can't be cheesed. I want it to be a fight that you have to earn. And I've been thinking about a lot of things. I think I'm going to make a video of certain things I would love to see in Dark Souls 2. And I haven't put anything up about Dark Souls 2 in a while. Because I don't want to be one of those people that covers it every fucking day until it's released. Just to try and, you know, get the zeitgeist of people searching for it to get more views. I don't want to be that guy. I want it to be valid and have a point. But... I was thinking the other day, this is something I'll probably discuss in detail in that video as we go back to an area we've seen before. The starting gift. I want the starting gift to have impact. I hope there's still a starting gift, but I want it to literally be, if you pick this starting gift, you cannot get any of the other ones, and the starting gift is an upgrade component or something of the, along that lines of something amazing. So you have to hold on to it for the entire game, all the way to like post-game or something. And it goes towards making the Northern Regalia or, or something amazing like that. Something you cannot get unless you pick that item. And this part here, if you remember a video I put up a while ago where it was um, Capra Demon, go home, you're drunk, I think. This is, this is what it's from. And anybody wondering how long I've had this footage, that was when I recorded it, the day I put that up. So this guide is, oh, this it's not a guide, it's a playthrough. But this, this challenge run has been recorded for a while. 
the commentary hasn't. I've, I've, I've left it intentionally so that I can intersperse Dark Souls content with other things. Because I was posting too much Dark Souls at one point, folks. It's just true. It was that simple. And I didn't want this to be a blitzkrieg of videos. I wanted it to be paced methodically. Funny video, though. I liked it. It seemed to get a good reception. But back to what I was saying. Just, just have the gifts me mean something. And mean something that it's a decision and it's a build decision so you've got to build your character around the starting gift if you can't have everything one of the things that bugs me the most on dark souls is how if you're willing to go to level 700 or whatever you want to do you can be good in everything if you're willing to do a couple of new game pluses you can get everything and it means that you never know what your opponent has because stats don't mean shit you don't know what their player style is, you don't know what their game is, essentially. They could have everything. And on the new one, I would love to see an ability or a sword that not everybody can have, so you know immediately that, yo, this is... This guy's got this, that means this. And, I, and I'd love that, that rarity and that familiarity, because I think it'd be a, a great feature. And I just... Decisions should be important, and, and Dark Souls does a fantastic way of, of treating decisions is important to go through the fog gate is either a boss or a new area you literally fear those fog gates on your first playthrough it's trepidation all the time do you kill an npc do you leave him alive which one gets you the best stuff which one's going to benefit you in the long run there's a lot of decisions to make and all of them are weighty you know even a conversation do you skip a conversation and end up pressing the wrong thing and then screw yourself out of a covenant it's all supposed to have cause and effect. And effect. I've done it again. Where does this language come from? Effect, causality, things like that. You know, different paths, different commitments to stuff. And I, ju I just love that. I, I love the concept of having somebody, having something not everybody can get. Like if I was on the the dev team for Dark Souls 2, I would have the best sword in the game or the best weapon in the game, best anything in the game. I would have it accessible from the very first instant of the game you know completely accessible from from moment one but the boss that that you have to kill to get it or the boss that's protecting it or the tail of the boss or whatever situation you want to say is so difficult that you were supposed to only fight him at the end of the game like, i'd probably make it his tail and i would also make it that he just doesn't give you opportunities to cut the tail off so it's it's almost impossible to get it. You're up against a boss that can kill you at any time, regardless of level, that he's so difficult and challenging that there's no way to cheese him, there's no perfect strategy, you just have to be a good player. And then, adding the variable of the tail being really difficult to get. But when you get it, it's, it's like, wow. And then on New Game Plus or whatever, the boss doesn't have a tail. So you can't get numerous versions of this sword. I think that would be amazing, but that's because I'm I'm a masochist sometimes with stuff, and I, and I just I hate it. I, everybody's got a moonlight greatsword. Every motherfucker on the earth who uses a, a an intelligence character has a moonlight greatsword. So much so that this potentially cool sword is so saturated that you just look at it and you go, oh wow, he's got a he's got one of them. Cool. There's never a moment of oh my god, he's using this. And just imagine if there was. Imagine somebody pulling a weapon that is so intimidating that you want to disconnect. You want to leave. You want to pull a mob. I think that would be so good. And don't get me wrong. Hackers, if, if, if the game is so insecure as it has been before, it would make them ridiculously powerful. But we've already got hacked weapons that kill you in one hit and one backstab. So I don't really think it would make much difference if all the hackers were using it. Because if anything, it would make you a better player. I, I just want... I want some fuck you weapons. I want some weapons that change the tide of a battle. I want you know, I want some weapons that are difficult to use. And I don't mean it's got a lot of recovery frames. I want a weapon that you don't quite know how it works or there's random variety in its in its performance. I want some risk versus reward weapons. I want I, I just <laughs> I want so much. I'm like a spoiled kid, you know. I just there are so many things that I would like to to contribute to this series that I think would would fit so well and I just hope that we're not disappointed when when the game finally drops anybody wondering what I'm doing this is me getting into tier stone range I should have used the the dusk ring I really should have oh, I just forget 
I'm, I'm terrible sometimes. But this is the centipede demon. This guy gave me a lot of trouble. I had to go and kill the blacksmith to kill this thing. Because it pissed me off with range. And it's all because the very first part of the fight, he can do a move where he doesn't have to come anywhere near you and he'll just keep spamming it. And I do not think it's even possible to hit him during that move. Unless you've got a lot of poise and you tank a hit. So for this playthrough, that's completely pointless. Because poise is pointless. We're not going to be taking hits. And it's this. Look at it. Look at it. Just bullshit. And I try and hit it. This is me getting so stubborn now. I'm like, I'm going to fucking hit you if it kills me. And you, you can't. You've got to wait for him to do the jump and the pivot, what he's doing now. But it's, it's not fair. And that did not help my, my efforts at all. Here he does his little combo. But... It, he only did one. That might be a grab, actually. Here he goes again with that same move. Look at it! Gosh, this guy. I've never had trouble with this boss, but I've never tried to do it no damage. And God, it were a nightmare. Absolute nightmare. Just because he's a bitch. Look at him. He's like fucking Dal Sim. He's like playing your nephew on Street Fighter. And all he does is stay at the other side of the screen, stretching his kicks. Dal Sim, yoga flame, yoga foot or whatever just it's just a twat move here comes the jump now we can hopefully oh chris why why do you do this to yourself missed it twice now no idea how i didn't get hit then that was a really fortunate roll and this has got real close real quick but it's not too bad this weapon does so much damage if he starts jumping he's dead because you just evade the jump and then you smash him again like look at him He's, he's got nothing at this point. Such a powerful weapon at level 1. And it's elemental too, so it takes absolutely no effort to do it. There's the taunt, because I did not like that fight. And there is the conclusion to this video. So thank you for watching, folks. I hope you're enjoying the challenge run. And you take care now.